Also, it is very fragile. This is what I've been told. When the ice was here, the volcanoes were blowing up. Black soot would compress each other for, for thousands and thousands of years. And some way down deep made diamonds, and some so far made slate, and some made coal. And this is coal that doesn't, coal that doesn't burn. And argillite is, you know, in between all that kind of stuff. My arms are sore already, and I just cut two pieces, and it, it only took me about 35 minutes, but my hands are hard to move, so I can only imagine how Lionel would feel if he had to, you know, cut out a big piece. There's not very much argillite left. Argillite is quite, quite an expensive piece of uh, stone. Uh, it's only found on Haida Gwaii. The Haida people uh, really protect the uh, Slate Chuck Mountain now, eh? and very few people get to go up there and get it. This is uh, the great piece in the Argillite collection and one of the great pieces in the entire Royal British Columbia Museum. It's an Argillite chest uh, by Charles Edenshaw. You can see that Raven is part man and he's part bird. He's uh, very typical of Haida um, thought and Haida art. It's the idea of transformation and the idea that the boundaries between animals and humans and the natural and supernatural are um, very porous boundaries. Uh, I grew up in Haida Gwaii, Masset. My grandfather, his name was Captain Andrew Bowner, or Ottawas, Soaring Eagle. He was blind when he was carving, and that's where I got my inspiration. Well, that palace is very really nice. We have the Haida panel pipes and ship pipes from 1835 period. So we can tell more or less when the Haida artists started to make argillite in large numbers for sale to outsiders. And, and it is a commercial production. It's a work of art. Only George Gunia carved argillite flutes. And then in my head, I said, carve a flute? The recorders are another very interesting uh, form. There aren't very many of them in collections, I understand, but they are based on uh, the kind of pipes, recorders, that would have been played by the visiting seafarers. Uh, one of the ones in our collection um, was owned by the artist Emily Carr. It has a lot of food on Haida Gwaii. There's a lot of free time, so they created art so they could kill time. Like this eagle bowl, it's a bowl, you know? So they make designs out of bowls, you know? With the eagle on it, the uh, human, with his hands and his legs. That's why they made these, they had a lot of time. Don't break that one. <laughs> Argillite is a very, very strong expression of Haida culture through the ages. Uh, it enshrines a lot of um, oral histories, traditions, images. Uh, it's a great, um, almost encyclopedic look at Haida culture. This is a um, spirit of the lakes. And all of these animals on here are two-spirited animals. Like the, the uh, frog lives in two-spirited two, two world. Same with the beaver, the turtle, the dragonfly. Rattles inside of here are, are all shrunken eyes of salmon. It's probably going to take another five to ten years to actually get even to 15% close of what Lionel can actually do. Past the learning how to carvings down, it's becoming harder and harder to find kids to do it these days. I've been carving for 38 years because it gives me a lot of freedom. I get to express my culture. I love doing what the creator wants me to do. That's real, real art.